Stan Gibalisco here, amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Golf Victor. I'm here to explain exactly why I do this ham radio hobby. Here's the transceiver currently showing the frequency. Code practice is coming from the American Radio Relay League headquarters in Newington, Connecticut. That's 15 words a minute right there. That is my transceiver, transmitter receiver. I normally run a transmitter output power of 10 watts on CW and 7 watts on phase shift keying. That thing right there is my Morse code keyer paddle which uh, allows me to transmit. I can send maybe 20 or 25 words a minute. There is the... Uh, that's an amplifier, an audio amplifier that's connected to a computer that goes to this transceiver. That computer, besides processing the audio, provides for phase shift keying using that display, which right now is not serving any purpose because we're listening to CW. I watch the weather or uh, the radar on uh, a computer that's connected to the internet using this large 46 inch display. There's a spectral display of the receiver passband. The lower waveform is rapid response, the upper waveform slow response. That peak you see in the center is the signal from the code practice station. I also have another computer connected to two monitors here. This one showing the part of the earth that's in sunlight and the part that's in darkness right now. It's just after sunset here. Ham radio operators can use this information to figure out which frequencies will work best for their purposes. That is nothing more than my, what do you call it, wallpaper on the other monitor. That's my rendition of a neutrino, N-E-U-T-R-I-N-O, you can look that up, on Wikipedia. That computer I just use mainly to make this place, which is my basement, and which I call the Noid Cave, look as nerdy as possible. There I do some electricity experiments. If you're astute, you'll notice there are no batteries in there right now, so I can't do much. There's a book that I wrote for people who would like to fool around with electrical stuff in a very simple way. You can credit ham radio with the existence of this Noid Cave. Ham radio is a very nerdish hobby, there's no doubt about it. And it is, for me, a hobby. That telescope doesn't really serve any useful purpose for ham radio either. Most of the stuff down here isn't necessary for ham radio, but it embellishes the station, makes it look as nerdy as possible. I love sitting down here in the basement and being a nerd. That meter shows the transmitter output and the way the antenna would be behaving when I'm transmitting. Below that, you can't see it in the darkness, but there it is anyway, is the interface between this computer, which serves that display and this display, and the transceiver which I use primarily for phase shift keying purposes. The computer acts like a terminal in that case. From here, coaxial cable runs along and goes outside to the antenna, but seeing as it's dark right now, you're not going to see the antenna. It's a 22-foot vertical antenna capacitively loaded 
so that I can make it a little bit longer for operation on 14 megahertz. So why do I do all this? I mean, you know, I could be out gambling in Deadwood right now and having a good time like all these people are doing down there. Getting drunk, getting into fights, getting thrown in jail. I could be doing all that kind of fun stuff, but no. Instead, I prefer to simply sit in the nerd cave and listen to stuff like this. A little uh, while later, if the noise on the 20 meter band abates, I will try and uh, see if there's any uh, DX, that's long distance uh, transmissions coming in from other countries. With only 10 or 7 watts, I'm able to work into South America very easily from this location with a very modest antenna uh, mounted on the deck which I can take down in a heartbeat if need be. So that's why I do ham radio because I just like sitting down here with this stuff and fooling around with it. I think it's cool. Ham radio operators uh, come in various sizes and shapes and flavors my particular size is very small. I am not fat, like a lot of ham radio operators uh, apparently are. Someone said that on a video. I'm not going to make any claims that way, one way or the other. My particular flavor of ham radio is experimentation. I like to build things. I like to test things. Once I've found out that they work or not, I get bored with them and try something else. Those are what is known as QSL cards. People still send these things through the post office after a contact, sometimes from foreign countries. SM, that's Sweden. TO, I, I don't remember what these prefixes mean. The one there, uh, FJ, that's uh, some Caribbean island, and you can see that it must be pretty hot there. The guy took his shirt off while he's operating, as I probably would in that climate. I'm not used to that kind of heat anymore. No, I'm used to the cool darkness of the Nerd Cave here in South Dakota, where I uh, still use my W1 call sign. Uh, the number one is New England, represents New England. I got that call sign when I worked at ARRL headquarters, the station for which you can hear in the background right now. So that, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, is ham radio. Still a hobby that a lot of people do. Upwards of 600,000 people in the United States do it. You don't need to learn the code anymore to get a license, and the license is not difficult to get. And there's one big thing that makes ham radio different from the internet as a communications mode. That is the fact that ham radio does not rely on any human infrastructure in order for its signals to be transmitted from one place to another. In other words, a station like this and another station like this on the other side of the world could communicate with each other even if the entire internet were to disappear. And the internet can, in fact, disappear. People say, well, you know, there's no such thing as emergency communications by ham radio in it anymore. But I was in Hurricane Andrew in 1992, right in the center of the storm in Homestead, Florida. And all throughout that entire area, the entire utility infrastructure was swept away like spider webs in a thunderstorm. All of those wires, all of that internet, cell phone towers, everything was gone. The only way to communicate in and out of there was either with citizens band radio or with ham radio. I used ham radio to at least find out when I could go back home, which happened to be in Miami Beach. I had tried to escape Miami Beach for fear of the storm surge and ended up in Homestead where at least the water didn't get me. I was like running from the frying pan into the fire. But everything worked out okay. I'm still here. And I don't live in that environment anymore. Don't have to worry about hurricanes. But we could have wildfire here. 
and that would wipe out the infrastructure just as surely as a hurricane would. Of course, I know better than to hang around during a natural disaster like that anymore. I'd be long gone from here if we had a forest fire in these Black Hills. I don't particularly care to get burned alive. I'd rather set up another nerd cave somewhere else. W1GV, Whiskey One, Golf, Victor, signing off from the Nerd Cave. 73.